Our friend Ken DeCoster is here from the Sheriff's Office and Crime Stoppers. How are you? Riley, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. It has been really busy around yes. here as far as law enforcement goes. I, I know you've got a, a whole bunch of things in front of you. Where do we get the, Where do we get started this morning? Well, let's start with something that occurred uh, early this morning, Riley. Uh, this is from our friends at WIFR. One woman is hurt after a home invasion early this morning. Rockford police say it happened just before 2 a.m. this morning in the 200 block of Cameron Avenue. Two women were inside the home when a man with a gun broke in. He beat up one of the women before running away. Sounds like a courageous guy. Oh, absolutely. The woman was taken to the hospital where she was treated for her injuries. The attacker is described as a black male between 5'11 and 6 feet, about 200 pounds. He had a bandana covering half of his face and a small black handgun. Something you and I discussed off the air, uh, an incident that occurred this past Friday afternoon at the uh, Alpine Bank, 2218 North Mulford Road. Friday, the 20th of January, shortly before 4 o'clock in the afternoon, personnel from the Rockford Police Department, Winnebago County Sheriff's Department, Illinois State Police, and the local office of the FBI responded to Alpine Bank on North Mulford Road in reference to an attempted armed robbery with shots fired. When they arrived, officers learned that a white male suspect, later identified as 34-year-old Lawrence Turner of Rockford, entered the bank and fired a round into the ceiling. And I should tell you, I'm reading from a press release from the city of Rockford. Okay. Turner then fired his gun at an armed security guard who was employed by the bank. The security guard returned fire and struck Turner, who collapsed and was later pronounced dead at the scene. No customers were present in the bank during the incident. No thank em- God. No employees were injured. Thank God. Yes. The incident continues to be investigated as a homicide in cooperation and consultation with the Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office. And I heard um, Rockford Police Lieutenant Kurt Wisenand interviewed by one of the TV stations. Um, while this is being investigated as a homicide, that's n- not necessarily that this is a criminal matter. Right, that, that, that he there, did something, the yeah, guard did something wrong. There here. is a death involved here. Detectives from the Rockford Police Department are also investigating the possibility that Turner is involved in other similar robbery incidents in the Rockford Police, uh, pardon me, in the Rockford area over the past several months. So obviously very disconcerting, yes. but from what appears uh, to have happened, um, while it's it's too bad that police say this young man chose to enter a bank with a gun and uh, and uh, use it immediately. Use it. Um, thank God, no innocent people were hurt. And uh, from the evidence we have before us, the security guard employed by the bank. Uh, apparently did his job and did it well. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's a story that got everybody's attention when that was breaking. You know, that, yeah, that was uh, everybody was buzzing about that one. And you know, one of the facts that that, pop, that popped up, not intrinsic to this in particular, but you know, take a guess at how many bank robberies there are in this country uh, per year. You, you have a ballpark, five thousand. Right on the money. <clears throat> Actually, you're right on the money, give or take. Wow, you know, as much as sixty-two hundred in one year and mm-hmm. forty-one hundred here and there, but averaging out at about five thousand bank robberies per year, which is about thirteen per day, coast to coast. Ironically, or coincidentally, Riley, I got a call on Tuesday of last week, three days before this incident, from a reporter from the Register Star who was doing a story on a spike in bank robberies in this area in twenty sixteen compared to twenty fifteen. And then three days later, there was this incident. Right. Um, and you and I have, have just have talked about this uh, at, at length. People talk about violent crime in Rockford. Clearly, there's a there is a, a a problem with violent crime, but it's not just uh, focused on one part of town. No. Um, and the reason why I bring this up is just to uh, implore people to to be aware of their surroundings. And again, yeah, here's a bank on Rockford's northeast side, nice area where just some guy with a gun who God knows what state of mind he's in or what he's on. Right. um, Fires around into the ceiling and then fires a shot at the security guard. 
And again, thank God, no innocent people were hurt or killed. Yeah, and for those who think, yeah, oh, it's a, it's one geographical area. I don't need to pay attention where I am. I'm just, I, I'm fine and all that. You need to pay attention to your surroundings. You keep your head up. Be aware of what's going on around you. And even that isn't necessarily going to prevent something from happening. But at least you might have a slight edge in not being caught by total surprise when something does. Mm -hmm. I try to be especially vigilant these days, Riley, when I'm in, uh, when I park my car, especially at night, in a parking lot, going into a business, a grocery store, be, you know, it, maybe the, the parking lot is dimly lit. Right. All it takes is one. And it, I, I feel like I'm, I'm being alarmist, but I'm trying to be no. just, just cautious, just be aware of your surroundings uh, and and people approaching. No, I don't think there's anything alarmist about being, you know, m mentally or if you can, physically prepared for what's going on around you. you. The chances are then you live to talk about it another day. So I don't think there's anything alarmist about that. Um, I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the Register Star did an editorial on this um, a scam involving the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office. Um, a man calls claiming to be uh, Winnebago County Chief Deputy Mark Carner, or another high-ranking person in the Sheriff's Department. The scammers try to make everything sound as realistic as possible. If they leave a message on your answering machine, it sounds urgent, the phone number appears legitimate, and you are compelled to call back. When you get through, the person pretending to be Chief Carner says deputies are on the way to arrest you for failing to appear for a grand jury for which you have been summoned. <laughs> You are told not to talk to anyone because that would further jeopardize your case. You're told to go to the bank, withdraw $2,400, and mail it to an address in New York. In some cases, victims are, uh, were urged to call an 800 number to transfer money via credit or debit card. The Sheriff's Department doesn't operate that way. If you think you're being deceived, call us at 815-319-6317. Earlier this month... Uh, the sheriff's office received calls from eight different people saying they had uh, been had called or had been uh, phoned by a guy claiming to be Mark Harner. And we're on our way to arrest you. Yes. Because that's the way the cops operate. Yes. You uh, know, they hate that element of surprise. Mm. They like to give you time to prep. <laughs> Perhaps get in the car and leave. You know, things like that. Yeah, that's the way the cops operate. But unfortunately, a couple of people fell oh, for sure. it. Sure. And because, you you know, you're, for a lot of people, your first inclination is to comply with mm -hmm. what comes, uh, something that's coming to you, what you, from, what you believe to be law enforcement. And, and sometimes when you get a phone call, and are presented with misinformation, if the call sounds official, you think, mm -hmm. maybe I did inadvertently ignore that summons to appear before a grand jury. Or right. What, 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 yeah, I, I must have. Yeah, I, I, I thought I, it was I, junk I, mail yeah, or something right. in pitch that they're coming to arrest me yeah, now. Well, right, at least if I right. send 2400 to New York, I'll be off the hook. I, I know you've struggled with a guilt complex for years. Oh, <laughs> oh. I feel guilty for not sharing that with my listeners. <laughs> <clears throat> but... You know, come on. You know, the, the, the scamming is endless. And from that, from people calling, the, the, saying they're from the IRS, mm -hmm. that is still going on. What a segue, Riley. Man, you're a pro. Well, I've been doing this a week or two. Uh, this from Channel 23. Monday marks the official start to tax filing season. The IRS has officially begun to accept tax returns for uh, 2016, both filed electronically and on paper. It's estimated that more than 153 million returns will be filed in the upcoming months. However, the Better Business Bureau warns the tax scams led the list of the top 10 scams for 2016. The IRS says it will continue to combat refund fraud and identity theft. The BBB warns us to be on the lookout for fake CP2000 notices, phone calls regarding a federal student tax, tax-related ID theft, and tax relief scams. The Better Business Bureau has several tips to avoid these kind of scams. First, hang up on any fake calls. It says the IRS will never call to demand immediate payment. It will also never ask for credit or debit card numbers over the phone. Right. Secondly, don't open email attachments or click on links. If you do receive a suspicious email, Forward it to the IRS at phishing, that's P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G, at irs.gov, and then delete it. The U.S. Treasury Inspector for Gen pardon me, the U.S. Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration 
Believes the victims have paid more than $50 million to scammers wow. posing as IRS officials since 2013. The average amount of money lost per victim is more than $5,000. Wow. I had no idea we were dealing with numbers that big. We're taxed enough. Yeah. Oh, uh, God, yeah. Uh, legitimately, yeah. some would argue illegitimately. <laughs> but um, to be the victim of fraud is just uh, unconscionable. And again, the IRS does not operate that way. It won't call you and ask for credit card or debit card information. And sitting at my desk, uh, you know, two months ago, I got one of those very same calls. Oh, you've been audited and this and that. A warrant will be issued. You need to. And I'm like, okay, well, put me through to somebody. Let's get this solved. Well, I was just testing you. Oh, no. Oh, well, can I have the check back then? <laughs> <Ken>? <laughs> By the way, I wrote it off Amy's account. It's going to bounce on you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, please be careful. And, and remember, with so many of these agencies, they will not call you first. You right. will get some sort of notice in the mail. It won't be a, a call on the phone. And, and the cops won't tell you they're coming to get you. We are looking for the following four individuals, Riley. 33-year-old Ray Sean Smith is a black man, 5'6", 175. He is wanted for aggravated battery. 36-year-old Chad Guru is a white man, 6'2", 190. He's wanted for driving on a revoked license. 36-year-old Autumn Fletcher is a white female. She's 5'4", 130. She is wanted for identity theft. And finally, 35-year-old Victor Britton is a black man, 5'7", 145. He is wanted for failure to register as a sex offender. If you have any information concerning the whereabouts of any of these four individuals, give us a call at Rockford Crime Stoppers, 815-963-7867, or call toll-free at 888-769-STOP. Remember, uh, legitimate calls that result in the arrests of somebody wanted or uh, help police crack down on a drug house, uh, people with information that lead to the arrest of a suspect or uh, th that scenario, they can be eligible for a reward of up to $1,000. There you go. And uh, all you have to do is make contact and share your information. Go to RockfordCrimestoppers.com as well to get a look at some of the uh, photos that the people Ken was just talking about right there. So now we've learned about 5,000 bank robberies a year. FBI claims about a 54% uh, success rate in, uh, in, uh, in, in arresting. So... I still don't want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Those odds are just simply not good enough for me. Ken, good to see you as always. Thanks for the time, Riley.